Gerald Whateley once said that there are three types of grand final entertainment. Good, so bad it's good, and so bad that it's memorable. And there's only one man that not only fits that final category, but has gone on to define it. The grand final entertainment is always one of the most important parts of the final day in September. Despite usually only going for 12 minutes, the year's always dominated with speculation over who the AFL might get in. And as the day has gone and bigger, the league's become more ambitious in its search for entertainment. This was no better exemplified than in 2011, when on less than a week's notice, the AFL got Lionel Richie to perform at the grand final replay. Speaking of Richie's performance, Gary Lyon had something pretty interesting to say during it on Triple M. This is a bit, just a bit flat. Oh, come on, Lionel. I wanted meatloaf. Lyon wouldn't have to wait much longer for his wish to come true, as the very next year it was announced that meatloaf would be the grand final entertainment. In the lead up to the grand final, Meatloaf fulfilled all the unspoken obligations that every international grand final act must partake in. He visited the MCG for some photo ops, awkwardly held a football, he learnt that the AFL existed and learnt what a Collingwood and a Geelong was. Though that last part might be a bit too generous. Will you be going for the cats or the pies on Saturday? Exactly. <laughs> That was, that was a good question, and that's exactly right. <laughs> I'm gonna have the cat pie. There was a lot of excitement heading into the performance. Meatloaf was and still is a massive name, especially in Australia where a lot of his songs became major hits. His genre of hard rock and heavy metal fitting with the sensibilities of the AFL and many of its fans. His music was made for a stage like the grand final, having previously performed at the Super Bowl and NRL Grand Final. So with all this anticipation, Meatloaf took to the stage and uh, delivered this. The next day, the grand final naturally dominated the news cycle, and while the main story was Geelong winning its third premiership in five years, a similar amount of coverage was also given to whatever we had just witnessed on stage. Meatloaf's performance was universally criticised, with many people saying that he'd slaughtered all of his classic songs. Really the only credit was given to his backup singers and band members, but the praise quickly ended there. Peter Hanlon used every letter in his A to Z guide of the grand final to pop meatloaf. AFL CEO Andrew Demetrio was a bit kinder, blaming the lacklustre performance on the weather rather than meatloaf himself. But the fallout of meatloaf's performance can still really be felt to this day. The AFL has continually been mocked for its decision, and now former AFL CEO Andrew Demetrio has said that it's one of his biggest regrets from his tenure. Meatloaf's performance is always brought up whenever the grand final entertainment for that year is announced or being interviewed. And if you don't know the context behind it, asking someone if they're going to do a meatloaf can kind of sound like some weird version of Australian slang. You know, if they like you, they're with you. And so far, since I've been coming here, they've been liking me, so I don't know what it's like to be on the other end. Well, you might want to ask meatloaf. <laughs> well, so I was told, I mean... Uh... Every poor meatloaf. <laughs> I'm here, I'm, I'm here for, to... I don't know. You know, I feel bad for Meatloaf, the flack that he gets. Do you know what? Do you know what? Because you were mentioning the Meatloaf thing before, and it was the best performance because you're still talking about it. <laughs> like... A few years ago, we had Meatloaf, 
at the grand final. There was a few noise issues, a few sound issues. It wasn't the greatest of I loaf was, gigs. I was, I was told it was, yeah, it was it was problematic. Mm. Mm. Did but you know about the meatloaf situation? I, they told me as I went on. <laughs> <laughs> so, whatever you do, don't do a meatloaf, whatever that meant. But let's hear the story straight from the loaf's mouth. Less than a month after the performance, he talked to the Sunday Mail during his Australian tour. In a pretty explosive interview, he called AFL bosses jerks, blaming them for the performance because of the conditions he was made to perform under. He also called all his critics butt smellers and said he was willing to take on all 20,000 of them, one at a time. He also promised to convince any artist to not play at the grand final. Less than three years later, he gives an interview to Billboard where he goes further into his version of events. Meatloaf revealed that he was suffering a hemorrhaging vocal cord during that tour of Australia, which was causing him to spit blood out on the stage every night. But when asked how his performances were received, Meatloaf again went in on the AFL. He said they were the cheapest people he'd ever seen in his life as he thought that the AFL Grand Final Entertainment was more comparable to something like the Super Bowl halftime show. When asked if he would ever return to Australia, Meatloaf said that if he did, it wouldn't be for the AFL, and if he ever did tour down under again, he would kick the AFL's ass. When asked about the comments, Gillan McLaughlin, now the AFL CEO, lightheartedly jived that if anything the AFL was overly generous for paying Meatloaf so much for what ended up being delivered. He said, he probably got, I don't know, half a million bucks or something, and it was probably about $499,000 too much. But a week after his comments to Billboard, Meatloaf had a change of tune. In a Facebook post, he profusely apologised for the performance and his recent comments, saying the only person to blame was himself. He cited his appreciation for the Australian public, for their previous support in helping make Bat Out of Hell and I Would Do Anything for Love massive hits. He felt bad for betraying the trust that Australia had put in him. Circling back to the start of the video, I think you can add another category to Jared Waitley's list. So bad or average that you're forgettable. Now, I'm not going to argue for a second that Meat Lowe's performance was good by any means, but at the very least it did fit the criteria of being memorable. There are dozens of grand final performances that fell flat or are hard to remember. You'd have to show someone visual proof for them to remember that they actually performed at the grand final. As bad as Meat Loaf's performance was, it's provided laughs and memories still to this day. Now I think everybody wants to see a killer's like performance at the grand final again, but if you're going to fail, fail with style. Well, maybe not style, but spontaneously combust perhaps? <laughs>